Our final subject of this edition of AXO features the discussion Noel Barry Mertz had with Dr. William Weitraub, Section Chief of Cardiology at the Christiana Healthcare System in Newark, Delaware. They discussed diabetes and stable coronary artery disease. Medical therapy is the proven option. Bill, how would you call medical therapy for this topic? Optimal medical therapy, as we discussed in the COURAGE trial, or do you have a different name? Well, we're talking about medical therapy as a general principle, but I think that our goal is always to have optimal medical therapy, because optimal medical therapy is medical therapy where well done, where we have good risk factor control. Yes, and this is critically important in all patients, but today we're talking about diabetics, and we have a pretty good fund of knowledge about revascularization in diabetics. Why are we not talking about that? Well, we are. We're going to talk about a comparison today between revascularization versus not revascularizing patients with diabetes and why medical therapy with vascularization held as an option in the future is a good initial strategy. Okay, good. So we're talking now about stable ischemic heart disease in patients with diabetes, and your contention is that medical management should be the first strategy. So tell us why you think that. Well, I think this is based on a series of clinical trials. We had trials that have compared revascularization strategies with PCI versus cabbage, and those have largely shown the advantage of cabbage compared to PCI in patients with diabetes. Like first of freedom. those, like freedom. And mm -hmm. the first of those, of course, was Barry. Barry. We also have trials in which we've compared medical therapy to medical management in people with coronary disease that is not as severe as those that we send to surgery. And the most important ones in regards to this question are Courage and Barry 2D. Very good. And trials that you know well. Yes, trials I know well. So your contention that medical management intensive therapy is best for stable ischemic heart disease patients rather than revascularization in diabetics. How do you assess the burden of ischemia? If someone has a little bit of ischemia, is medical management appropriate? What if they have a lot? Don't we know something about that? Well, what we found is that at the COURAGE trial in particular, that the amount of ischemia didn't matter. That as an initial strategy, patients did better, or at least as well, with medical management as with an initial strategy of PCI. That is, we did not find an interaction term with the amount of diabetes. But we did not have that many patients with moderate and severe ischemia in COURAGE. So there still is an issue if people really have a large ischemic burden. So when patients with or without diabetes diabetes have a large ischemic burden. That is this trial that now has been started called the ischemia trial, and you and I are both involved in that as well. And that is addressing this knowledge gap. That's right. The ischemia trial is a really important trial looking at patients with a large ischemic burden. And this will apply both to patients with and without diabetes, and will also address the relative places of both PCI and cabbage as well. Yeah. All right. And then what are some of the pathophysiologic concepts that you think that medical management is superior to revascularization? Why do you think this? Well, I think this is particularly true in patients with diabetes because diabetes tends to be a diffuse disease. Now, coronary disease tends to be diffuse and involve the whole vascular system, but this is a bigger problem in patients with diabetes. In addition, a lot of patients with diabetes have microvascular disease. So we see patients, patients with diabetes in whom we try and perform PCI and find that we really have not reduced angina very much. So I think that PCI in patients with diabetes, especially if they have diffuse disease, is quite problematic. We really do not achieve what we're seeking to achieve. Are you ever concerned that we've kind of messed up their collaterals, that the angioplasty possible with some distal embolization actually causes some harm that offsets any putative benefit? Well, I think that in recent years, we've really gotten a lot better at PCI, and, mm -hmm. and the complication rates are really remarkably low. But there's always the potential for doing harm. And if patients have really severe, really diffuse disease, where they're not nice proximal lesions and sure. good runoff, that is a setting in which we may more likely do harm. Yeah. And what about the concept that, Doc, hey, you fixed that for me. I, I don't have to take these pills. Do you think that's a phenomenon about why angioplasty may not be as good? Well, we found in the COURAGE trial 
we could maintain patients on their medications, whether they were treated initially with PCI or medical therapy. And it's very important to work with patients and also with our referring primary care doctors to make sure that patients receive optimal medical therapy. We want patients to get the best therapy that they can. And medical therapy properly delivered and taken will reduce events. It will reduce events in patients with and without diabetes. And in fact, there's some evidence of even greater benefit benefit to lipid lowering in patients with diabetes compared to patients without diabetes. So medical management, whether people have revascularization or not, is the cornerstone of therapy. Now you raise a very important issue, and that is that patients may not be adherent to yeah. medical therapy. And that is a tremendous issue that we all need to work on. But I tell them, you know, all of these arteries swim in the same swimming pool, and that the revascularization strategies can address an artery or two or three, but that they really have to adhere to their medical management. All right, last question. Is there no place for revascularization in these patients? When does Bill Weintraub revascularize diabetics? Well, I said lots of patients with diabetes to revascularization. Right. So when do I do it? Acute coronary syndrome. So remember, we're talking here today about patients with stable ischemic heart disease. Patients with acute coronary syndromes should be treated with revascularization where it is anatomically appropriate. We will also have patients who will continue to have a substantial amount of angina despite being on medical therapy, and those patients, when anatomically appropriate, should be sent for revascularization. And finally, there are the areas of uncertainty, and that's the area of patients who have a very large ischemic burden. And that's the ischemia trial. Precisely. Well, that's what I do too, so you and I are consensus on that. So I think in summary, and see if you agree, we've discussed that medical management in diabetics with stable ischemic heart disease clearly reduces events, should be first-line therapy. Revascularization as needed in the areas that we just identified, and we'll be looking to the ischemia trial to give us some added information about whether or not it's ever appropriate as a first strategy in high-risk patients, and that we should work hard on compliance to this medical management. Perfect summary. Okay, good. Thanks. Thanks for having me. And that concludes this edition of Axel for May 2014. For details about studies discussed on Axel, refer to the written summary included as a PDF file on this disk. This issue of Axel qualifies for up to four Category 1 CME credits. To obtain CME credit, go to www.audiodigest.org slash online testing. This is Alfred Beauvais for the American College of Cardiology. Thanks for listening.